Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce matrix transformations by just giving an overview of the topic and explaining the different ways we can look at matrix transformations that will be discussed in other videos. So thus far, we've been interpreting matrices in different ways, looking at systems of linear equations as augmented matrices, then we've been doing matrix equations, and most recently we've done matrix multiplication. So now we are going to start by considering matrices as functions or transformations. So if we have a matrix A times a vector X, that gives us a new vector B. And we've been looking at this so far, but the new way we're going to consider it is by thinking, how does A transform the vector X? So what is A doing to X that makes it into the vector B? So I like to remember back to when we've learned other types of functions, so maybe something simple like f of x equals 5x. This function takes the input x and scales it by 5. So we can think of something similar with a matrix. So let's say we have a function t, and that's of an input vector x, and let's say it does something like a matrix times the vector. So the matrix A would be 3, 2, 1, 0, and that matrix gets multiplied by the vector x. So what would we say that t does to x here? So it's inputting a vector, and it's outputting a matrix times a vector multiplication, and what is it really doing to x? In the f of x version, we could just say that it scales x by 5. And we'd like to be able to say something similar for this function involving a matrix, if possible. So I'm going to give us the definition of matrix transformation. Some of this notation might be a little different from how you've seen functions in the past, so I'm going to write it all out and then I'll explain the parts. For our definition, we say that a matrix transformation T, which starts in Rn and maps to Rm, is a function of the form T of x, where x is a vector, is equal to A times x where A is an M by N matrix, and X is a vector in Rn. So, okay, what do we have here? The name of our matrix transformation, or our function, is T. We're using a capital letter T. You can honestly use any letter you want. This is just a really common one that we see. Then this Rn with the arrow to Rm indicates the domain and the range of this function. So the function T is taking in an input vector, X, and that's an element in Rn, so we're starting in Rn. Then we're outputting this matrix vector multiplication. So we have A times X, and we can figure out what the dimension of that will be. So A is M by N, then the vector has N components, and so our resulting vector is an M by 1, so it has M dimensions. So that's where our range is, we're outputting a vector in Rm. This is everything we've been doing before with doing a matrix times a vector. It's just a new way to write it with this function notation and thinking about inputs and outputs. So we would summarize this by saying that T takes an N dimensional vector as input and gives an M dimensional vector as output. And we would also say that T has a domain of Rn and a codomain or range of Rm. So when we get to more advanced math and we start being more precise with our words, we often see the word codomain instead of the word range. So I tend to use the words codomain and range interchangeably in this context. You're probably used to seeing domain and range, so it's fine if you want to use those words, but codomain is another word for our range, and it gets more frequently used in this level of math. So before I get to an example, I just want to give an overview of the different ways that we're going to talk about matrix transformations. This will give an overview of the next three videos I have on this topic. So like our usual functions that you've probably explored in a college algebra or pre-calculus course, we have many different ways of examining matrix transformations. One of the things we're going to do is to classify matrix transformations as a special type of function called a linear transformation. We'll also go through some algebraic examples where we consider the different possibilities for what the transformations might look like algebraically. And we'll go through some geometric examples where we'll consider how the matrix transforms vectors in a graphical way. So we'll look at the graphs and see what the matrix does to the vectors it's transforming. 
So these are the different things we can consider about matrix transformations, and I want to end this video with an example to just give you a sense for what matrix transformations can look like and the different things we can say about them. So for our example, let's say that we have a transformation T that goes from R2 to R2, so it has R2 as the domain and R2 as the codomain or the range, such that T takes an input vector X, T of X, and it's equal to A times X where A is the matrix 3, 2, 1, 0. Then given this transformation, let's find what the transformation does to the vector negative 2, 3. So we're going to find T of the vector negative 2, 3. So if we unpack a little bit our transformation, we have T of X is equal to A times X. And when we substitute in our A matrix, it looks like 3, 2, 1, 0. And then our vectors x are two-dimensional since they're in R2. So we could say they have components x1 and x2. So this is the multiplication we're going to be doing as part of this transformation. Then we're inputting the vector negative 2, 3, and we're going to see what happens. So I'm replacing x1 and x2 with negative 2 and 3, and then we're just going to compute this multiplication. So we take negative 2 of the first column and add it to 3 of the second column. That gives me negative 6, negative 2, plus the vector 6, 0. And when I add these together, I'm getting negative 6 plus 6 and negative 2 plus 0. When I do matrix vector multiplication, I like to go through this step where I take the linear combination of the columns. This might not be how you do it. You might just jump to this final step when you're doing the algorithm. That's fine. Then when we simplify, I'm getting the vector 0, negative 2. So we input a vector, negative 2, 3, and we were given a vector as the output, 0, negative 2. So if we were to write a sentence about what happened here, we might say that t maps the vector negative 2, 3 to the vector 0, negative 2. Another way to say this is that 0, negative 2 is the image of negative 2, 3 under the transformation t. So what t does is it takes the vector negative 2, 3 and sends it to 0, negative 2, and we have a bunch of ways to talk about that happening. So that's the more algebraic interpretation of what's going on. We could also look at this graphically. So we know that t of the vector negative 2, 3 is equal to 0, 2. We also sometimes use this arrow with the like sort of bar on the left hand side to show that negative 2, 3 gets mapped to 0, 2. So it correlates that input to the output. So we could draw our vector negative 2, 3, and we know that the output vector is then the vector 0, 2. So what our transformation or our function is doing is it's taking the input vector and moving it over to the output vector. And you can imagine that it's doing this for every vector in the plane. It's moving it in some way that goes with the transformation. This is just one input and one output that goes with it. All right, so that's an overview of what we're going to be doing with matrix transformations. We'll unpack different parts of this in the following videos, but that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.